everybody. This is Rob Furman and Keith Reeves, the seditionists. We're not normally side by side. Hi, Keith. Hello. But we are at ISTE 2016, and uh, we're going to do a very short episode of the seditionists. We were just talking here with Linda Gordon, who's with Learning A to Z, and I'll introduce you to her in a second. And we were talking about at uh, the teacher evaluation and how we think there may be some uh, issues with that that we'd like to talk about. So let me see if I can introduce, I have, I have to flip this thing around? Let me see if I can introduce Linda. Oh gosh. Hi. Hi everybody and uh, thanks for having me on the show. This is very impromptu and, and very exciting and I've never done this, but I'm really excited to be up to be here and have that conversation about teacher evaluation. I really think that they need to have something changed with them uh, because they're really not measuring what is really important and they need to make sure that they're taking a look at really what the teachers are doing in the classroom and how it's impacting the students, not just passing the text, but actually preparing them for life beyond the test. Excellent. Keith, my man. Well said. Uh, many of you who are from school districts like mine, where you're very affluent, uh, high performing, uh, meeting all the benchmarks with standardized testing, have probably recognized the same phenomenon that many of us have. The teachers are not changing their practices and adapting to the students that they have in front of them. Rather, they're performing their tasks on a daily basis as educators based on what's convenient for them, on the things they've done before, the things that have historically worked. If the way in which you are judging what you do works. If you're measuring the way that things work based on things like standardized test scores, um, you've had a high level of performance in the past based on your report cards, that's not sufficient, right? What we're talking about at the moment is changing teacher evaluation practices to reflect more accurately what is going on in the classroom. What do you see as an administrator? What are you seeing coming from the teacher? And I think the thing that we really are missing in this conversation is what do the kids say about what's going on? It's something that's very controversial, including the student voice in teacher evaluations, but the student voice is not just what they say in the moment. Yeah, 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 he makes me take my hat off. You know, young man, take your hat off. That's one thing. That's not what we're talking about. The student voice takes many forms. Look at the student work. Look at what the student is able to accomplish. Look at what the student is able to apply based on what they learned in that teacher's class. That's a very different set of criteria, and it's not really something that we have no. in the evaluation system. No, absolutely not. And not only on top of that, but the, the biggest thing that, that really bothers me when it comes to evaluation, and you were alluding to this, Keith, was the idea that we're more concerned about the numbers than how we got there. Yeah. It's it's like, it's like uh, the old, you, know, you always see it on the internet, went, went to the pig farm, got the pig ready, measured the pig, and the pig didn't gain any weight, so they lost the thing. Well, you forgot to feed them, you know? It's one of those things. We have to know how these numbers are getting there, and that's all in the classroom. You know, so if, if the kids have great numbers, that's fine, that's wonderful, but how did we get there and how can we harness what the teachers have been doing in order to transport that idea and that concept to the other classrooms yeah. to have even more success? It, One more thing and I'll let you go. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing that drives me crazy is this school performance profile thing that's become sort of, an, I believe it's national, it drives me insane because you know what? I, I understand why they did it. They want the schools to, they want every teacher in the school to be part of the responsibility of raising that building. But if you're if you're one or two not fantastic teachers, you could hide behind that. So. You can hide behind that score because the score has so much impact into your evaluation that it doesn't give a real indicator of what you're doing in your classroom. Okay. Agreed. Something Lynn and I were just talking about, and I think we'll turn the camera around. I'm interested to hear what Linda has to say on this. Um, we both taught in New York. Um, what teachers are doing is not just what they're doing in the classroom. We have some recertification um, requirements that we expect of teachers, but I'm really interested to see, you know, what is it that you're doing to better your practices? Where are you going? Who are you talking to? How are you improving um, your skill set as you bring that back to your kids? It's something that we don't really look at or talk about very much with teacher evaluations. I think about the criteria that we currently use in areas like ours, and they're often, you know, the kind of thing you can just hand to the teacher and say, write what you did, and they sign it, and that's the end of the process. That doesn't seem to me to be a very comprehensive analysis of what that teacher is doing in totality. I know it's not a comprehensive evaluation of what I'm doing, so, I mean, I don't think that that's uncommon. It sounds like you experienced the same thing in New York. Yeah, I definitely do. They don't they don't want to take charge of their own professional learning to make themselves better educators. Uh, we are having the conversation. I, I came here to ISTE. It's a, I came here on Friday, so I could be here on Saturday, yesterday for Hackhead. 
Yes, it's a weekend. Yes, it is the summertime. I could be going to the beach, but I value the conversations. I value the connections, and I value the importance of all this information that's going to be passed back and forth and was yesterday as part of that conversation. And so I really want to see a lot more professionalism that way so that they can step up to the plate and, and really take charge. We want our students to take charge of their learning, and we as educators, I think we really need to model that concept to them. Yeah, that's well said. I think that's important. I mean, are you seeing, I mean, Rob's a principal, you guys know that. So are, is that the sort of thing, if we were to rewrite the teacher evaluation system, you had given a list of a couple of things. So can you repeat that? What, what, would, what do you want to see as a principal that captures that? If I was going to recreate a teacher evaluation, I would have three components. Planning and preparation for the class, mm -hmm. the environment of your class, and the instruction that you're doing. Okay. Everything else, SLOs, um, professionalism, uh, school performance profile. No standardized up, test scores. No standardized test scores. That, like all, that. that all goes out the window. And here's why. Because the most important thing that these teachers are doing is they're teaching their kids in the classroom. And as a principal, when they close that door, I don't know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So I've got to have faith. I've got to know that, that they're dedicated teachers ready to do what's, what's right, no matter, do the right thing, even when nobody's watching. And yeah. that's making sure that these kids are being educated. And that's where the emphasis of the evaluation should be. How did you plan and prepare for this class? What did you do when you're in the class? What's the overall environment and culture of your classroom? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want anybody to be able to hide behind other people's successes, like having a great school number, and all because you will go to that school, you get that bonus. Sure. You know, it boils down, to, and, I, and I'll put it back on myself even, it boils down to the principals. We need to make sure that we're teachers, that we're the instructional leader yeah. of that building, and that we're doing it through professional development the way we want it modeled. And then if they do that and they harness it, that's great. If they don't, then it's our job to get into those classrooms and make sure things are happening. Nothing else matters. If you're a professional, you should be doing things professionally. You should be on time. You should be turning in stuff the right way. You should not be evaluated on that. If you're doing it, you should be. If you're not, you should be getting disciplined for it. That's being a professional. I can imagine that one of the things we might see in the comments, comment in the section below, um, I can imagine a teacher saying, okay, so the third section you've articulated is the most important, the actual things that are going on in the classroom. Isn't it important to have an administrator in the classroom as often as is feasible to directly observe that? Like, Linda, when you were working with BOCES, how often did somebody come and see what you were doing in your work environment, to see what you were doing? Uh, they actually maybe once a year, yes. and, and to me, I, getting getting back to that, a lot of teachers with the evaluation once a year, sometimes they will take that same lesson and they'll pull it out year after year and pull the same lesson yeah. and to do that. And to me, as a as a professional, I would think that you want to expand yourself. You want to try something different. Maybe since again we are at ISTE, put in a tech tool in there, try something different, reteach it a way a different way to reach your learners. Mm -hmm. But also, I want to piggyback on what you were saying, and I want to get what your thoughts are. Um, on student surveys because I actually worked with the New York City Board of Ed pushing them out and the re the recent research shows that when the when the students they answer those surveys they actually they answer them honestly because mm -hmm. they really want the voice they want that chance to, to to be heard and they show really how they feel in the classroom are they valued are, are they there for extra help are they giving them the time and the attention in, in that warm environment need they're finding that directly relates to student achievement in the classroom yeah and and that's probably going to go into a whole other conversation that we could start at another time but i i agree with it wholeheartedly the students are the ones that are in there every day. I'm the principal, I've got 60 teachers. I can't be in that classroom every day. But you know who is in the classroom every day? Ta-da! The students, they're in there every day. So they are the ones that could absolutely evaluate. The problem becomes this, you've got unions that are gonna knock this out one direction, and you've got a, you've got school boards and superintendents that could use it inappropriately, and that's and where that's a huge concern. Probably something that we can bring bring your concerns about that into the comments section, because I think we can all see how that could be easily abused. Absolutely, yeah. and that's where I think the problem arises. Not like the with current that. system isn't being abused now, right? So. Exactly. It's like you know the lesser of which evil. So at the end right. of the day, we're at ten minutes. We're going to knock this off. Right on. Uh, I'm Rob Furman. Keith Reeves. And Linda Gordon. From New York. From? Uh, oh, from ISTE. 
Uh, oh, learning A to Z. You got to shamelessly plug you here. Yes, we go for shameless plugs. We're sitting here at ISTE 2016. I'm sure Keith and I will be sending uh, several more of these out. No but enjoy, and hopefully we'll see you here. Bye-bye.